In a previous video, we looked at how you can embed a survey into a website and then you can basically pass parameters so that you can get the context from there and pass through which web page they were actually on. So we used it in the example of uh, someone requesting uh, details about a specific product. So here we've got our survey, very, very simple. And here is where we see it embedded into a web page. So it's just asking for some basic details on a specific product. So let's go ahead and look at how do we check to make sure that John Smith or whoever the lead might be, um, if he goes through and looks at two or three different products and he submits different forms on those different pages, that actually we get to combine all of those survey requests or the, those requests about the product onto the same lead record rather than getting John Smith in there three times. So in other words, how do we do a bit of duplicate detection um, checking within um, based on using Microsoft Forms Pro? So to do that, we can go ahead and we can create a Microsoft Flow to do that checking for us. So if we go into Flow, here we can see we've got our flow set up. Let's go ahead and walk through the different steps and, and try and understand what this is actually doing. So the very first thing is when the trigger is when a new survey response is received. So we can see we've got the environment, we've got the entity name of the Forms Pro survey responses and the scope is organization. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the response ID from that specific form that we um, are concerned with so that then we're able to actually get the um, the answers from that specific form. So we've got the form that we've that we've um, put and embedded into the web page. The response ID, if we look at this, the expression is basically taking the uh, Microsoft Forms Pro source response ID and it's basically converting that into an int integer. So that exact code is going to be on the website, the corresponding blog post. If you go to meganvwalker.com, you'll be able to find that and, and get the exact um, code that you need and copy and paste it. So now that we've got the survey response details, this next part, um, if you watch the video specifically about passing param parameters back through the context parameters, you'll find out more information about it. But, and, and I've followed and, and done a video on exactly the same step, but in more detail. So we're adding in that pass JSON um, step just so that we can get which page it was on, which product it's related to. So again, watch the other video for more details on that. You don't have to do it for this purpose. It's just so that we can get a, a full clean process and actually use the product um, page that, that they were on as part of the topic if it's a new lead. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to list the lead and try and essentially find to see if the person that submits the form and fills in their email address, does that email address already exist on a lead record? So I'm going to click on show advanced options. What I'm doing is I'm um, doing what's known as an OData filter query to basically say, does the email address one, which is basically that main first email address um, field that most people will be using on a lead, um, equals, and then whatever the email was that was submitted into the survey response email field. So we can see it right here. So that's what we're checking. We're also going to set the top count to one. Um, in theory, if you're doing um, uh, being sort of doing some responsible duplicate detection checking within your Dynamics 365 customer engagement environment, then you should only have one record that um, has that email address on a lead. So we're going to go ahead and set that and try and find if that lead exists. So the next thing we're doing is after we've set that, we need to put in an expression that will basically look to see if there is a lead that is returned from that query that we've just looked at. So in other words, does the email address exist? If it does, um, then there'll be a value that will be in something called the ID item internal ID, there will be a value in there. So if there is and there's a value, great. Otherwise, we set that as null. OK, so there'll, in other words, there'll be nothing there. So I'm going to reference a blog post from a good friend of mine in Australia called Bruce Sitole, who uh, he was the one that, that came up with that expression. And without it, then I wouldn't have been able to complete this, um, complete this video and the related blog post. So 
thank you, thank you, thank you, Bruce. Um, and like I said, go ahead and click on the link um, to Bruce's website and to that specific post so that you can read more detail and, and see the full explanation of uh, what this means, what all the pieces of it mean and, and why that this needs to happen. So we're setting our expression and we're saying that is equal to true. If that's equal to true, we're basically saying that lead record exists already within our um, within common data service or uh, f from a Dynamics perspective within Dynamics 365. And what we're going to do is if that equals true, we're going to go down the yes path and what we're going to do is we are going to link the survey to the existing lead. So when you come to the yes path, you're going to insert a new step of an action um, and that action will be to update a record and we're going to update that survey response record that came from the very beginning. So our record identifier is the activity and it's the activity ID from the new survey response, in other words, that very first trigger step. Now, when you first add this action, this apply to each won't be there. So don't try and look for that. Just go ahead and put in the action of update a record. As soon as we go down and we put in the regarding at the bottom here, that apply to each is automatically going to be added in there for us. So you don't need to look for that specific step. We're going to set it regarding the lead that we found in the list lead step. So we can see it right here. The regarding type is going to be leads. Now we're looking at lead just in this example. You can do the exact same thing with contacts if you wanted to. So you just need to um, identify which it is that you're doing it for. We're also setting the respondent and we're going to use the first name and the last name from the um, list lead step. And then we're also going to fill out the respondent email address in that field as well, again from the list lead step. Finally, at the top, we're going to set a subject of that survey response and we're going to do request for details and we're going to use the product page that we got from the past JSON step. Again, like I said before, you don't need to use that if you're not embedding your web page or um, you are embedding it on something that's completely different to a product page. You can obviously use whatever example you need to for your circumstances. Now, if the um, this condition is not met therefore it's false we're going down the no path because this email address that we've got on the lead record does not already exist therefore we're going to create a brand new lead so if we click down on this path what we're going to do is we are going to um, create a new record and we're going to create a lead and we're going to populate the lead with the values from the survey response. So whatever fields you have um, uh, requested for someone to fill out on your survey, you'll get those survey responses, last name, first name, email, um, a text box, um, you know, whatever it might be. So you're going to go ahead and populate. We've just got the last name, the email and the first name. And then obviously on a lead, a to the topic is a required field. So again, we're going to populate product inter interest hyphen and then the, that product page name from the past JSON step. Once we've got the lead in there, the last and final step is essentially the exact same thing as we've got here, this link survey to existing lead. But what we're doing instead is we're linking the survey to the new lead that we've just created in the previous step. So everything here is going to be exactly the same apart from when we start putting in the respondent's information and if I type in first name oh, notice that you've got the step of create new lead and the step of list lead we want to make sure that we pick it from the create new lead so we're not picking um, something that actually doesn't exist in, in this type of example we want to make sure we're picking it if we've created the new lead we're picking that first name versus one only if that lead already exists in the system. So just make sure you pick the right one. So that's the flow. That's what we need to set up so that we are saying, right, new survey response comes in and does the person already exist or does the email already exist on a lead record? If it does, just link the survey response to the existing lead. If it doesn't, go ahead, create a new lead and link it to that. All right, so let's go ahead and trigger this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a someone that is not in the system.
and we'll just go ahead and fill out that and submit it and then we'll do another one and this one is in the system already and we'll go ahead and submit that all right so let's go ahead and look at the flow and we'll just give it a, a moment and go ahead and refresh awesome so we've got two running so that's what we would expect and they both succeeded so let's look at the first one so we can see green ticks all the way down really my con the thing that I'm interested in is the last condition and this is the one that I submitted first that was not in the system and we can see there that the result was false therefore that email address didn't exist so what we did is we went ahead and we created our new lead record of Zach Davis and then we went ahead and we linked Zach Davis to that request for details. Let's go back and we'll go to the last one and again we've got green ticks all the way down and now the expression was true it met that condition and we linked the survey to the existing record for Megan Walker. So finally if we go into our list of leads, there's Zach Davis. We use that specific topic. And if we go into his record, we can see there is that Forms Pro survey response that has been linked to his record. If we go back to the list and we look at Megan Walker, now we can see there is the um, survey response that's linked, but we can also see one that happened um, further on down as well. So. Hopefully that gives you a good process that you can use. Um, you can modify it slightly. Like I said, if you are doing this based on contacts, you will need to set it up per um, form because if we go back to that flow and we have a look at it again and you're getting the survey response details, you have to identify what form it is. So you will need to um, factor this into any of the flows that you create um, for your specific surveys. So hopefully this helps. This way it should prevent you from creating new duplicates in your system unnecessarily just because you're using Microsoft Forms Pro. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.